want to do this is because we want to remove the soldier from harm's way. And how do we remove the soldier from harm's way is creating the biggest standoff distance. To do that, we take the soldier out of the vehicle. The system behind me allows uh, soldiers to do is operate in unmanned convoys. The lead vehicle would have a, uh, a human driver and the, there would be a string of vehicles that would follow along that would be unmanned systems. So unmanned in general allows for vehicles that, uh, for instance, operate in what we call dirty, dull, and dangerous activities. So an area, say there's an area rife with IEDs, for instance, that allows us to not have a driver, not have a soldier uh, in those areas where an IED could harm them. If you walk around here today, you'll see all kinds of really interesting things in autonomy and driverless vehicles, right, or vehicles that drive themselves. And of course, we're very much engaged with the auto industry in that. We put a kit on it, so we have to make sure we make it autonomous so it can drive itself. So it has to have like control, a drive-by wire, and so it can't be all mechanical linkages. It has to be controlled by a computer. So we have to make sure it has all the necessary components so it can be drive-by wire, so the steering's controlled by the computer. And then on the top, there's all kinds of sensors up there, and there's sensors even down on the bumper. So there's uh, laser range finders or LIDAR on the, that can basically scan out in front of the vehicle and see the distances of the objects in front of it. It's got, it's got the visual cameras, so it can see all around the vehicle, but it's also got infrared so it can see thermally of what's around the vehicle. So even if it's dark or there's different kinds of weather conditions, the vehicle has a certain level of confidence that it knows what's around it. And if it sees an obstacle, it can, it can maneuver around it. So, and it also has like things like GPS, but it also has an approach where if we lose GPS for some period of time, it does something different. And then in convoy operations, it communicates with the trucks behind it, so they all know where they're going. They have some idea of, you know, who's following who. If the lead vehicle is speeding up, the following vehicle has to speed up. So there's a lot of technologies incorporated in it. It takes decades to program it, but the good thing about programming robots uh, is that we learn every year the robot's going to get incrementally better at her and then eventually we'll be able to just download the software in a matter of moments and the robot will have the experience of 10 years of driving, 20 years of driving, 30 years of driving. So right now uh, I would say our robots probably drive as like a new driver but we want them to be a professional driver.